Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the Unity Gamelift series. In this video I'll be showing you how to set everything up in AWS's web console to get Gamelift up and running. The video will be followed up by a part 3 where I'll show you how to set up your Unity project to communicate with the Gamelift servers created in this video. By the end of part 3, you should be able to have a multiplayer functionality in your Unity project using Amazon's Gamelift services. Amazon has this example called Mega Frog Race to introduce us to multiplayer communication with Gamelift. I personally don't like to use these examples directly, but I always try to take what they're showing and get it to work in a project I'm already familiar with. So that's what we're going to do today. Also, it should be said that AWS is not necessarily cheap for the small indie developer. So use with caution, set up price alerts, and also shut down the fleet when you're not using it to avoid any extraneous costs. Okay, so let's grab the real-time server example script from Amazon. This will be the code that gets installed to our Gamelift server. We want to use this because it's a good starting point as it has all the API methods already baked in. Copy and save it locally and zip the file. It is important to note that we will be making changes to this script later in part three so that it works with our game. Navigate to the Gamelift console and go to the real-time scripts page, then hit create script. Fill out the form and under script code, select zip for script type, then upload the zip file, hit submit. Following along with the tutorial, next we'll create a fleet. A fleet is basically the configuration of server types that Amazon uses to run our server code. Back in the Gamelift console, select Create Fleet. Give it a name and description. Then for script, select the name of the script we uploaded earlier. Under Instance Type, I'm going to select the default free tier eligible server. For Launch Path, input the game script file name that's inside the zip file and hit the green check mark. Leave the rest set to the defaults and hit Initialize Fleet. It will actually take a couple minutes for it to complete. You can monitor the progress under the Events tab. According to Amazon, using a Lambda Function client service in front of our game lift servers is best practice that allows us to secure all outside calls and prevent cumbersome maintenance had we directly interface with the game lift SDK. Next, head over to the Lambda console and hit Create Function. Fill out the name and then below expand the section that says Choose or Create an Execution Role and make sure the option Create a New Role with Basic Lambda Permissions is selected. Hit Create Function. On the newly created Lambda page, hit the Permissions tab, then click on the Role Name, then hit Create Policy. Select Game Lift for Service. Under Actions, expand Read, and then select Describe Game Sessions and search Game Sessions. Then expand the right section and select Create Game Session and Create Player Session. Name the policy and give it a description and hit Create Policy. Back in the Lambda console, hit the Permissions tab again and click on Role Name. Click Attach Policies and in the new view, search for the policy you just created. Select it and hit Attach Policy. So what you've done here is allow our Lambda function to call the Gamelift APIs to create or join game sessions. From the Mega Frog Race example, copy that example Lambda code and paste it into the function code section. Copy the fleet ID and paste that value for the variable Mega Frog Race fleet ID. Then update the region to make sure it matches where you're working from and then hit save. Create a quick test function, which is just an empty call, and execute the test. So when I tried running the test on this Lambda code, it didn't work because of a missing UUID library. I guess with the latest Node engine, we lost the ability to import some dependencies directly in Lambda, so we'll have to build it locally and upload the script with its dependencies. You're going to need to have npm installed to be able to build it. So copy the Lambda script locally to a new folder, I made a small update to correctly use the UUID library. Hopefully you can see that here in the video. Otherwise, check in the description for the attached link. Run npm install UUID in the directory where the file is. It will generate a node modules directory along with a package lock.json file. 
zip up the contents of that whole folder. Back in the Lambda view, hit Actions, Upload a zip file, and upload the file we just created. Now hit Test again, and you should see a response object return from the GameLifts API. If you go back into your GameLifts Fleet console, hit Game Sessions tab, and you can see that it actually created a game session. We'll talk more about that in part three. The final part of this video is to create our Cognito configuration. Still following along with the tutorial, we'll go into the Cognito console and hit Create New Identity Pool. Name it anything. Hit the checkbox for Enable Access to Unauthenticated Identities. This just lets anyone play who has the base Cognito credentials that will be shipped with the game. Otherwise, you'd have to allow for individual authentication, and that's outside the scope for this video. Hit Create Pool. Under Role Summary, expand the policy document and hit Edit. Copy the policy example from the tutorial and paste it in there. Don't hit Allow just yet. Grab the ARN from our Lambda function and paste it over the existing value in the policy's resource line. Now go ahead and hit Allow. Very important here. Select Unity next to the platform, then copy the AWS credentials code to a safe spot because we're going to be needing it in part three. Okay, so we've got all the Amazon side finished and in the next video, part three, I'll show you how to configure your project and complete the Gameless server integration so you can see the multiplayer functionality in action. Thanks for watching.